So uh, just a very quick introduction to, to Wealth 99, we're a little bit different. So as I said, we are a, a digital wealth platform. So what that really means, it, it's easy to make the, the change between an exchange and ourselves. We're a company that feel for people to get involved in crypto today, there is there's a lot, there's too much choice and not enough education. Um, for instance, there's, there's over 27,000 cryptos today. And, um, and one of the uh, attendees here, Scott, was talking about, you know, some of the more riskier coins that he likes to take a punt in. And that's great. And that's all about what crypto is. But what we do is we view crypto as an investable asset class. So what we do is we, we home in on the, the top kind of 20 coins. In actual fact, our platform offers the top 16. And, and we look at the types of assets that have a particular intrinsic value behind them. They have real utility. They have a sustainable use case uh, slash business model that primarily drives other business payments within banking or web free moving forward. Uh, for instance, if you look at the second biggest coin in the world, Ethereum, the you know, profit and loss turnover of Ethereum is actually, uh, I think it's just like even larger than Nike. And, and no one really knows that. And everyone wanders into the space. And I think back of my journey, actually, when I, I started to invest in crypto four years ago, and it was on recommendation of someone I work with, someone I know. Um, and he was just kind of buying Bitcoin and doing pretty well. So I just started to buy a bit and not in large volumes. Um, but I, you know, maybe started with 150 pounds and, and kind of worked my way in. But I, I did so without really understanding what it is, what it does, and more importantly, where it could be on any given time scale. And I mean, we feel a lot of people that wander into the cryptocurrency space that are brand new to it kind of lack that either knowledge which in turn leads to a lack in strategy. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, we're going to be rich next week or millionaires in two weeks, which is possible and it has been done. Um, but for a lot of our clients, we are geared to people that have a more of a wealth mindset. So we are a platform that have these top 16 assets that really have proven themselves and have a very, as I say, sustainable intrinsic value use case moving forward. So we feel that they are wealth assets and they should be viewed in the same way as you would look at a stock or share on the normal regulated market. And what makes us a little bit different is we're a very face to face company. Hence the reason I'm talking to you today. Um, and that continues on into normal everyday business life. So all of our clients have our mobile numbers, our WhatsApp. Um, they can interact with us in any any time they wish. Um, it's more of a, a, a white glove kind of personal service. Excuse me, why I just connect to the power because it's going to die on me. And again, so that's that's something that's quite unusual in the space. If you're dealing with uh, crypto exchanges, typically uh, they are quite hard to communicate with you. Generally, if you have a problem or a concern on the platform or need something fixed for you, you, you raise a ticket by email and they come back to you in you know maybe a day or two. Um, and it's generally a bot kind of service. So. We don't believe that should be the case. So we're very kind of human face to face. We'll help you in every step of the way. And you can talk to us whenever you want um, us all as employees. And we have a UK uh, team in the UK that um, support team that can help you as well. And they always come back within 24 hours. Uh, on top of all of that is the next step to why we're different. So security, custody. Um, we are one of the very few that when you buy anything on our platform, whether it's you know, one of the cryptocurrencies that we offer or, or whether it's the tokenized precious metals or something we do, um, you are completely insured uh, by BitGo. BitGo is the large, largest custodian for digital assets in the world. And what that basically means is on our platform, everything that's bought goes straight into cold storage with BitGo. It doesn't sit in what's called hot wallets on our exchange. Our exposure on any given day is 2% of what we've actually got on the exchange. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not liquid, by the way. You can simply buy and sell, click the button, it comes straight out, it'll go into your bank. It's not a problem at all. It just means we don't store it on the exchange. We work very, very hard on security. Um, we're an international company and our security headquarters are based in Brazil. Our head office is Australia, New Zealand. Uh, we're also in Dubai, Singapore, and obviously UK. Uh, but we work very, very hard on security. We're independently verified on the Mozilla Observatory, which is the uh, aggregator that moderates and, and, and grades fintech businesses, including banks. Uh, we're rated at A+. To give that some perspective, our bank were HSBC, they're, they're rated C. 
Uh, so we're very well on security. But should the worst happen, and it has happened in the past where you're holding digital assets with a certain company and for whatever reason, any kind of criminal aspect leads to those assets being lost, they could be hacked. With us, you're completely insured to that. Um, it, all the assets are held with BitGo. They're incredibly, almost impossible to uh, infiltrate from a criminal aspect anyway, but even if that was the case, completely insured. From a custody insurance point of view, uh, the crypto is unregulated asset. Okay, so in terms of you know, the regulator, regulatory means to that and FCA, there is no obligation for any crypto firm, exchange, platform to offer custody, none whatsoever. So many of them don't because it is actually quite a costly exercise from a business point of view. We do that because we believe that it's the way it's going to go. We embrace regulation. We work with the FCA. We sit on a round table with them um, and we work regulated in an unregulated space. So we believe custody is important. Um, if you just look back at some of the stories like FTX a while ago where you know, things have come wrong there or they've or they've leveraged their assets. So, for instance, a lot of uh, companies or a lot of exchanges that may offer you any kind of staking, that basically means that they are doing what banks do every single day, which is leveraging your, your, leveraging your assets out on the open market to, of course, make a gain on that, um, which poses sometimes significant exposure and risk to the assets you hold with them. So we don't do that. So everything that we hold for clients is, segre is completely segregated from our own business model, um, which means that if all of our clients wanted to liquidate their assets today, we could absolutely on that straightforward and it wouldn't affect uh, our business model. So they're all the reasons why we're just a little bit different uh, to the norm. Um, and in actual fact, because of all those reasons and more, we're, to my knowledge, the only firm that have been able to pioneer two very tax efficient routes to buy crypto as well. Uh, so if you come on to the Wealth99 platform uh, and you use it, you can open an account as either an individual, a business, because many businesses use us, so some businesses like to transact in crypto, some businesses like to invoice in crypto, we can facilitate that for you. Uh, and you can also open it as a pension, as a trust. So we have two routes to market to buy crypto with us. Uh, one is a ISA, an IF ISA, which is open to business, business directors. Uh, and the other is a SAS pension, which is also a pension for limited company business owners. Um, there are obvious tax merits to that. Um, you know, the lack of CGT being, being primarily the most, uh, the biggest one. So it's a nice tax efficient way if you have the kind of medium to long term wealth mindset within crypto, which is what our clients typically have, um, to just eliminate that kind of CGT moving forward. So just to summarize, to say we are the company where we consider ourselves a digital wealth asset company, not an exchange. We're not really uh, geared for traders. We don't have that kind of very complicated look and feel that kind of you know, matrix style looking uh, exchange feel very very simple to use a human being to speak to whenever you want and just you know an almost prerequisite where we've chosen those kind of 16 assets for you but we also offer uh, as as international cpd members we offer a lot of security uh, a security sorry a lot of education around crypto as well so we like people to understand you know what they're buying and and exactly by doing that, they'll probably understand where it could be in a few years. Uh, and that then gives you that kind of strategy moving forward rather than going into a choice of 27,000, picking some random because you either like the sound of them or someone's recommended them and just hope that you're very rich next week. Um, so that's the that's our angle at coming at crypto. And, and by all means, as I'll mention at the end, we're happy to have kind of one to one chats of anyone who's interested and wants to know uh, a little bit more. So as I just uh, as I just go through the slides, that's obviously a Gareth who would have been delivering this for you today, but I'm afraid he's had a few um, family troubles this week and he's unavailable. So I'm afraid you've got me. Sorry about that. But as I say, go easy. Um, we have to show a bit of a disclaimer uh, just for you to read there. But essentially, it just goes that to say that we're not giving you any kind of financial advice or trading advice um, on these. Um, uh, the obviously price of cryptocurrency can go up and down uh, and it's good to uh, obviously be fully educated into what you're buying but we certainly don't offer any financial advice around the sector we just give education into it uh, and, and a bit of guidance and a safe place to buy and secure the crypto so please conduct your own due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any decisions 
So very quickly in terms of, uh, this is a quick agenda. So we'd like to do a very, uh, there's not very many slides at all. Um, I want to keep it fairly informal today, but there's just an overview of how crypto fits into the financial ecosystem. Where the industry is today uh, and the opportunities and the current challenges, banks, hedge funds, asset managers, types of coins, types of exchanges, and how to stay secure and get involved safely. So just a few very basic stats. Uh, there's 78% of adults in the UK have heard of crypto. Uh, 9.8 million UK consumers held crypto in 2021. And 1.1 trillion, which I think is slightly over than that today, um, USD market cap globally of the entire cryptocurrency industry, uh, which is something that's growing all the time. Global adoptions are becoming absolutely huge in this space. Um, and I think with some of the news that's happened recently, i.e. BlackRock uh, launching that we're just about to launch the spot ETF for Bitcoin. Um, and that's not a futures ETF, a spot ETF, which is huge news. That would only move this industry a lot further on. Uh, and this is just a small bit of data in terms of an age range for crypto. I think there's a bit of a misconception uh, that crypto is for kind of the young and tech savvy, but it's, it's, actually, it's actually not the case um, that we've found in terms of our clients. Um, and the ones that kind of understand this space have more of because as I've said before, I have more of a wealth mindset. Um, so that just gives you an indication that the most prevalent age in there is uh, 34 to 54 years old in terms of uh, actually getting involved in buying crypto. Reasons for crypto investment in the UK, two there that are obviously um, sticking out among many more. Uh, a gamble to make money, again, um, probably down to just the lack of education that's available. People not being so focused on education, more on businesses, uh, exchanges where people buy crypto to be to be absolutely blunt with you. Frankly, they make money whether you win or lose. Uh, they have trading fees pretty much everywhere. If you Whatever you buy with them, and there are hundreds and hundreds of choice, they offer all the cryptos that we really don't. Um, they are more for traders. But if you go in and, and you make any kind of purchases and, and don't do so well, they still have their trading fees. That is their business model. Um, and to give you some comparison to that, so Wealth99, we don't operate with trading fees at all. Uh, we simply just have spread, as anyone else would have, but there's no trading fees. We operate under an assets under management model, which is simply consistent with wealth companies in the UK. It's 0.95% of your holdings uh, per year, which is taken monthly. So it's very, very small. But actually what it means is that as your portfolio grows, that's how we make more money. So we, our interests are very much aligned with yours. Um, whereas uh, any kind of, as I say, any kind of crypto trading exchange, you know, they're just interested in trading fees. So not so much your, so your success rate, but your activity levels is what defines their profit and loss. Um, so crypto is used for much more than just currency. And I think that's uh, interesting in the sense that it's called cryptocurrency. And I always come across people that are new to this space that just assume it is currency, just like your British pound. Um, and, it, and it really isn't. Uh, and that goes back to what I said earlier about Ethereum as an example. You know, what a, a fantastically huge revenue stream year in, year out. But no one looks at them as a business. They look at them as a transactional coin. And, you know, why would I have Ethereum? Why do I need to buy my coffee? Uh, or my next car and Ethereum, you know, I have my pound. So people are just not looking at crypto in the right way. So crypto leverages a decentralized network through the distributed ledger technology, such as blockchain. So it enables secure transactions, records, and control over the creation of coins, verifiable transactions, including coin transfer. You can say blockchain is a shared transactional record. It's immutable, it's public, it's, it's not controlled by any one entity and it's completely transparent. Um, and you know, blockchain itself, as I'm sure we'll move on to see, is, is not new, it's not specific to crypto. It's been around since the 90s and it's a, a distributed ledger technology which has been adopted by many, many huge companies along the way uh, that we'll see as, as, as we go, including the likes of BMW. Um, it's not a new thing, it's just what crypto is based on to make it absolutely immutable. Uh, the current hot topics in the crypto industry is uh, so big, Bitcoin is the only crypto worth knowing about um, and the Bitcoin halving. Um, again, not necessarily the case. You know, we've homed in on the top 16. 
some of which have absolutely fantastic utility in the, within the banking payment system and, and obviously Web3, which is the next phase of the internet and very much the future of the internet. So coins that drive that are going to be you know, right there and you know, in really helping that moving forward. The Bitcoin halving, that's something that happens every four years where there are less Bitcoins available to be mined. Um, most people may know, of course, there is a there is a, a finite number of Bitcoin available. It would only ever be 21 million, which, of course, gives it that kind of store of value. Unlike, of course, our fiat, our pound system today, which down to quantitative easing, the more we print, the less value it has. Uh, that's where Bitcoin has that kind of store of value. Bitcoin's been adopted by companies and institutions globally now for years as that store of value. More and more businesses, whether they be, you know, Fortune 500 companies, some of the largest companies in the world, right down to, you know, you know medium to large businesses that open accounts on our platform, simply want to have some Bitcoin on their bottom line because they believe it's, the, the, you know, a fantastic store of value moving forward because of that finite number and because of where they, the, where they believe uh, this industry to be going. Um, hacks and scams, particularly with FTX. So this is what I just touched upon a little bit earlier. You know, crypto is a new, it's a new asset class, right? So the problem with that is the media is, is never going to be terribly kind to it. It's it's probably seen as, uh, it's like the anarchic where it's it's there to sort of tumble or to corrupt the our, our banking systems that we all rely on today, which we don't believe is the case. I think crypto really complements the banking system. Um, you know, but in terms of hacks and scams, it is an emerging asset class and with that obviously attracts a kind of criminal wave to it. You know, there are various different ways where there are red flags or you need to be a little bit careful when you're buying cryptocurrency. Um, from what we've seen, most of it being anyone to, to get involved to either help you purchase or help you withdraw crypto, you absolutely do not need anyone to do that for you, including us. Um, if should you ever get involved in, in the crypto space or, or as you continue to get involved in it more and more in depth, everything should be done by yourself. Uh, it should be your own your own account, your own platform that you've chosen uh, and it should be just attached to your bank account only. Um, there is a, a possibility at this point as a company, we will be the, maybe the first to uh, disable crypto withdrawals. Um, and I'll tell you why that's being discussed about. So that, so if you are, if that would happen, and you were a client of ours, you would simply be selling your assets into your, into your fiat currency, into your pounds, into your euros, and then you could just literally withdraw that straight into your bank account, rather than sending crypto away from the uh, onto the platform to a different exchange, simply because it's the way regulatory bodies like the FCA and also the way banks are viewing the industry right now. Um, a very, very high percentage of kind of hacks and scams come from that kind of activity where people have been kind of talked into transferring crypto somewhere else. Um, so we're looking to very potentially combat that, although there's absolutely not definite, but I just want to give you some idea of that's absolutely being talk talked about because it's the, as I say, it's the major first hacks and scams. Um, the other, I mean, that's people scamming people. The other worry for a lot of people entering this space is, is obviously not so much the scams, but the hacks. So that's where you've got uh, crypto exchanges that, you know, obviously are being completely hacked. All of the crypto has been stolen and people lose their assets that they hold with them. So going back to the introduction of Wealth 99, that's something we wanted to combat. We wanted to be seen as, as a crypto bank, somewhere that you don't have to worry about self-custody. You know, people... Ever since uh, FTX, which I'll quickly explain, happened, a lot of people have, have been obsessed with self-custody. So you buy your crypto wherever you buy it, and then you, you download it to some kind of memory stick and, and keep it at home, whether it's under your bed or in a safe. And that we've all lost our car keys somewhere along, down the line, haven't we? And we can absolutely understand why people are doing that. But, you know, we don't want clients to worry about that kind of thing. You just like your bank account right now, you know, you're not withdrawing your money and keeping it under your bed, are you? There's complete trust there. That's why we have that kind of full custody solution with BitGo. It's because we want to be seen as almost that kind of crypto bank somewhere that's safe and secure. You buy it, you hold it long term. You do not need to worry about it. It's completely fully insured. Um, but look, hacks into exchanges has happened multiple times. 
And also, you know, companies like FTX. FTX was major news within crypto. Um, and it's a shame in a way, but uh, in typical media fashion, it was very much blamed on the asset class as to why that kind of collapse and one of the biggest exchanges in the world happened. But it wasn't anything to do with the asset class. The asset class was just merely the commodity that's been moved around within the business. But it was actually very, very poorly managed as a business. They were leveraging all of their clients' assets on a massive wide open market, and it all really went wrong. They were also putting a lot of the proceeds into their own coin, which didn't really have any intrinsic value behind it. And that was sitting on their balance sheet rather than pounds and dollars, right? So it was mismanaged from the top um, and, and, and for high staking rewards. And, and again, that's why, as an example to us, we don't get involved in any kind of business activity like that. We simply put it all into cold storage and we just hold it long term for our clients. Um, so I think we've covered the, the next part down. All coins are meant, designed to be a medium of exchange to replace fiat. Not particularly, no. A lot of them, as I say, many, many, many of them have their own kind of business agendas. Look, of the 27,000 cryptos that are out there, there are so many that are, um, as one of the attendees said earlier, worth a punt. Absolutely, why not? But they're really there just for the trading community. And traders absolutely know what they're doing. If it, you know, HMRC's definition of a trader is someone who makes a million transactions a year. And we're seeing that a lot of people who would maybe think they're traders, they don't really get close to that level. And we don't expect people who work full time to have that kind of knowledge and ability to trade anytime, anywhere. Um, they simply want to buy in store. So that's why we offer a lot of education and then segregation into this crypto marketplace, because coins like and I will pick on one, maybe Shiba in you, they don't have any kind of intrinsic value behind them. So that's not to say that the price of, of that coin can fluctuate and in a very positive way and make you a lot of money. It can. Um, but unless you absolutely know what, when and where that's going to happen, um, you know, that's the only way you can really get uh, success with that. What's driving that coin is simply just a, a community behind it, people buying and selling it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, so uh, you wouldn't really look at it as an investable asset class. And if we were to act and offer our business in the normal way, like other exchanges, just like Coinbase, Binance, Crack, and all the rest of them, we wouldn't have the roots to market such as the pension, for instance, because in terms of pension funds, they just wouldn't, they have a duty of care over them and they would never be comfortable in pension funds going into coins with no intrinsic value that are just a very speculative trading coin at best. You know, I, I think the industry needs them for liquidity. It's great for the traders. That's fantastic. But for us, we just simply don't focus in on that. So that just gives you, you know, a little bit more idea of how we've managed to pioneer that space because it really wasn't easy to do to to have pension companies work with us and be comfortable with pension funds going into crypto it has to be done in the right way um crypto is terrible for the environment well that goes down to the mining which is uh, primarily uh, kind of proof of, to proof of stake which is uh when it comes to bitcoin specifically that's something that's been improved upon all the time with kind of solar um, and, and other ways to produce the energy to actually mine those coins. But it's that's becoming something that's been not so much actually a hot topic recently, but that was something that was really detrimental to Bitcoin you know, at, the, at the beginning of the, of the last few, few years. And also, of course, crypto anonymous, untraceable and anarchic. Well, that's not always the case because um, it depends on how companies work. So we, as a platform, we work for chain analysis, which means we can we can trace every transaction uh, you know, back quite a long way that happens through our platform. And also, it's not particularly anomalous and anarchic because all the crypto is on blockchain technology, which is, as I say, that transparent, immutable ledger. So you can trace uh, transactions back. So it's just the way it's sometimes portrayed in, in the media. Uh, and obviously, but central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, they, they, are, they are coming. There's no question about it. And a lot of people ask if they're going to disrupt the world of crypto. We personally believe it won't. Um, it is really just a replacement of your pound coin. And let's face it, you know, for the amount of cash most of us are carrying these days, we're almost kind of living that world now. Um, but what will happen is that very, very relatively slowly terms, but fairly quickly, actually, when you when you think of the, the broader picture, um, pound coin will be replaced. It will be replaced by a digital currency. Your bank account will be a wallet. Um, and, and it'll move forward that way. And as you can see from that list there, they are, there's many, many countries and many more that we can't see there that are 
working and have been working on central bank digital currency projects for many years already. Um, and that's something that absolutely will be rolled out globally um, with little doubt. It is something that's coming. We don't, as I say, feel it's going to disrupt the crypto industry, your, your, your Bitcoins, your Ethereums, your Cardanos in any way, shape or form. It's just going to be a replacement of the fiat currency we use every day today. Uh, so there's some of the banks and financial institutions that have embraced crypto working in various different forms. I mentioned BlackRock. Um, BlackRock are one of the two biggest companies in the world, BlackRock and Fidelity. BlackRock are about to uh, unleash their, I say their spot ETF, their Bitcoin spot ETF, which will be a way of investing into, into Bitcoin through them specifically. Um, with their client base, a lot of people within the crypto industry would deem that to be an, an incredible, unprecedented moment uh, that will really move not just the price of Bitcoin, but also the, the marketplace in general. It will move it forward to the next level. That's an enormous bit of global adoption that's, that's right up there with the kind of buying power of uh, MicroStrategy that famously bought so much Bitcoin. Tesla did the same. And also, you know, a place like El Salvador where Bitcoin actually turned into currency. Um, that's a huge piece of news, but there's some of the companies there that have embraced it, that are working with it and are offering Bitcoin to their clients more and more. Uh, and that's an elaboration of that. As you can see there, um, in some of the various different ways, some of the biggest companies in the world have embraced it and started working with it. And there are some fantastic names there, many of which, by the way, it's quite interesting, uh, JP Morgan Chase, uh, being one of them, but were completely against crypto uh, when it first came out. Uh, and also made very public, kind of almost derogatory comments towards Bitcoin in terms of having zero belief in that kind of asset class. But have then, of course, changed through global adoption and client demand. And now all of a sudden you see them working very much within it and having a crypto division within the company itself, which is growing, and a clientele, which is growing. So it's really fantastic to see. Uh, in terms of the retail sector, so it, and, and it's companies that are, you know, you know accepting some crypto for payments. Um, my personal view, and it is very personal, I, I just couldn't think of anything worse than to pay for things with, with my crypto. <laughs> but that is because many people like to do it around the world. Uh, me personally, it is my, I don't know how you want to call it, it's my wealth plan, it's my retirement fund. So I couldn't think of anything worse than spending my Bitcoin and my Ethereum, and my Cardano, and my Solana. Um, it's an investment for me. But people view it in different ways, and it absolutely can be used as a transactional coin. There's no reason why it can't. It's down to personal preference. But they're some of the, some of the biggest companies in the world that have absolutely embraced that and allowed it to be transacted within their, within their business. So a little bit on credible crypto and staying safe. The two types of exchanges uh, in the world decentralized and centralized so the decentralized world is fans of the de decentralized world will be the real crypto hardcores who like complete uh, anonymity um and that involves kind of there's no fiat currency attached there's no kyc and aml there's no uh, you know if you open an account with us we have kind of full kyc and aml to fca standards it's just like opening a bank account these types of exchanges if you don't have that um, you're simply just swapping crypto for another, um, you know, exchanges like Pancake, Uniswap. They're very, very popular, don't get me wrong, but it is just for that kind of crypto swapping in and out, um, um, you know, completely anonymous kind of wave. That's what a decentralized exchange is. And then moving on to the centralized exchange, they're answerable to a specific jurisdiction, uh, a regulation, a supervision, uh, just like ourselves. Fiat currency and crypto can be up uploaded and withdrawn you can ask where they're located and of course coin, they used our platforms like coinbase kraken big Tres, big tricks and hopefully seem to be us wealth 99 um to give you some perspective on us just moving back you know we're relatively i guess you could say we're relatively small if you're you know looking at platforms like um you know coinbase um binance kraken we are relatively small in those terms but you have to remember that we are the first company in the world to actually not just talk about tokenizing assets like we've done with precious metals and like we will do moving forward with real estate and, and derivatives and stocks, but um, we're the first to be coining the phrase crypto wealth, digital asset wealth. Um, there's no one else to really 
goes for that. They're all so focused on trading. Um, but we're coming at this from a completely different angle and we're the first to do it um, because we believe it will be important as this asset class just gets more mature moving through the years. So trading exchanges versus wealth platform. So in, uh, intended to facilitate wealth building, as I say, we're supporting financial professionals um, and we're doing so on, on a kind of regular basis. So as CPD members, we help a lot of kind of regulatory bodies and we also help a lot of IFAs and we continue to do an educational talks in-house to those guys to help them understand the space and then to hopefully help them on their journey to work with their clients more and more as client demand grows, global adoption grows. It's something they want to work with, um, but in some cases can't and in some cases won't because it's something that they might be uncomfortable with or don't know enough about. Simply, and, and that comes down to that lack of education out there. So we're continuously working with financial professionals on that. So the differences between trading exchanges and, and well-focused platforms is, as I said before, look and feel. We have that very simplistic look to our platform. Um, you know, none of the huge matrix looking numbers everywhere, graphs. It can be almost slightly intimidating for someone of any age that are brand new to crypto that go onto a platform which is so focused on trading because it will it, it will look like the matrix to you um so the look and feel the functionality usability uh for us very very important we just want it to be as simplistic as possible um and that's not to say it, it doesn't give you all the information you need in terms of the kind of graphs pricing uh information on the asset itself what it does links to the white paper every coin has a white paper which is essentially its business model it has all of that and, and all the help you'll need, but we want the functionality to be as user friendly as possible. Um, and uh, that that's probably why we don't have very many kind of traders per se coming onto the platform. Um, but you know, it's, it's designed to be quite easy. Obviously a fee structure, as I mentioned before, um, we don't operate on a kind of trading fee. Um, there's not there's not that charge every single time you do something. Um, we just operate on that kind of AUM model. Um, with the design for your portfolio to grow because we've already kind of segregated that marketplace for you and we feel that you're buying the right assets so naturally it's going to grow so as you kind of dollar cost average yourself in and you, you buy a little bit more a little bit more that portfolio with the right assets and the right strategy should be growing over the right time period for you um, so we feel that obviously things to, to look for is is custody storage uh, and this goes to what i've mentioned before um, really really important um as i say it is it crypto has been around what 11 12 years now yeah it's that's still an absolute baby in terms of any kind of financial system therefore you're always going to have that criminal aspect which is also evolving and trying to keep up with the, the pace of technology as it evolves so that's why you know we're one of the few we're not the only one i will be honest about that but we're one of the very few to offer that full custody service because it's absolutely so, so important. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, it's not just the custody, it's also the security level. So if the worst was to happen and we were hacked, not only do we have an absolutely tiny exposure at any given time, it's it's always circa, as a 98% cold storage, 2% on the exchange. There's very little for them to kind of to get at. Um, but even if it was possible, as I said, it's backed up by that full security with uh, BitGo, who are custodian. So as it says at the bottom, we are an example of that. Um, so it's always important to check if your kind of exchange you're using has any form of custody, especially if you're holding with them for any any kind of longish period of time, uh, medium to long term. So the types of coins, uh, payment cryptocurrencies, CBDC, central bank digital currencies, we, we've just covered before, um, is converting digital money into crypto. Um, also stable coins work very much like that way right now but that's CBDCs are going to be bank issued, um, which is coming out in the relatively near future. Uh, this corporate crypto um, example is the, the DM, the Facebook coin, um, where a company creates its own coin to select, take payment within its own ecosystem and its own customer base. Uh, and there's independent crypto, such as the, which is completely decentralized, widely traded examples there, Bitcoin, Litecoin, ADA, Cardano, so on and so forth. Um, and these are the, the, some of the best cryptos in the world, as I say, that are decentralized and independent, but they also have their very own and very unique 
intrinsic value and, and use case behind them, which is something we encourage people to look at when they're choosing the crypto that they're, they're going to invest and put their money behind. Um, security tokens are used to tokenize and represent an asset. Uh, so, for instance, that could be a company that um, gives you fractional ownership and, and gives you kind of digital shares. Um, and also, as we feel, and a lot of businesses like JP Morgan Chase have recently spoke a lot about, the future of finance is going to be tokenization and fractional ownership. Um, and that's going to bleed itself into, as it says there, wine, art, classic cars, real estate. Um, the, the, you know, fractional ownership is going to make investments more readily available and easier for the mass population to get involved in. Um, imagine that, you know, classic Lamborghini Ferrari where you could just own a, a portion of that uh, as it appreciates in value. Something you can't do today, you have to own the whole thing, which is, you know, not too cheap to, to say the very least. So that's the way we feel that it's going to go. We've already done so actually. So we're one of the first companies to, I think, in fact, we may have been the first to tokenize precious metals. So on our platform, you can actually buy gold, silver, platinum, um, and you can do it via a smart contract, digital asset. You can do it on the platform and you can own it and hold it there. It's backed up by the physical asset, which is held at ABC Bullion in Australia. You know, and if clients wanted to, they could even go and see the physical asset for themselves. But they're buying a proportion of it by a digital, say, by that smart contract and in a very digital way. It makes it very, very easy to buy um, you know, gold, silver and platinum, which has always been very, very popular. So, you know, that's the first step for us in terms of tokenizing more than just the digital assets that are known as cryptocurrency. Um, we're moving into this this kind of wave where you can you buy those kind of tokenized precious metals but also as i said before the next probably big step for us um in the relatively near future will be real estate where you can have the fun you know fractional ownership into specific real estate projects um and there's something that we're looking to 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 add to the platform in the next few years So, I mean, reporting in terms of reporting your uh, crypto to Peter Jarman, uh, tax software that's integrated currently is Coinly, a crypto tax calculator, and, and there'll be a company called Recap going live soon. So they're the kind of software providers that, that give that kind of breakdown of your, uh, your acquisitions and, and, and deposits and disposals throughout the year uh, from your own platform. So that's something that helps companies like Peter Jarman then calculate your tax at the end of the year. And they're the ones that we're currently working with. And as I say, Recap will be a company that we work with quite soon as well. We're just waiting for that to come on. So, uh, so what we want to do, so we live in your, we're leaving you a bit of a QR code there that you can go through um, through Peter Jarman and, and you know, by all means set an account with us if, if you wish. Just to, to summarize, in terms of a platform that we offer, you can be, completely an individual um, as you as you may be used to being with other exchanges you can open an individual platform you can open a business account with one of the few to do that so your company then can and then you know, say trade they can buy and hold crypto on its bottom line um, or you can do it through uh, as a trust account which is a pension so we uh, we found a lot of people when we're pioneering this route particularly with the pension so many people have asked for this we found over the past few years but if they're with a SaaS pension provider that doesn't allow crypto they would think that once they've said no you can't do it they think that that's the end of the matter and you can't do it well you absolutely can it's just that as we are right now um you know we we don't work with every pension provider out there sadly um we work with a good handful so we can make that recommendation for you and we can pass you to them they are the ones of course that administrate the pension and they provide that for you uh, and go through all of the the red tape with HMRC. Um, we are simply the platform that they are comfortable with the funds being deployed to, to buy and, and, and hold crypto and, and buy and sell as they wish, because of course it's a self-directed pension. Um, but it's an incredibly tax efficient way to, to do it. And as I say, because of the, the structure, uh, the look and feel, the assets we offer, and also the, the, the regulatory uh, structure that we have, to my knowledge, we are the only platform where you can do that. So whether it's the ISA, whether it's the pension, it's a very tax efficient way to buy crypto, especially if you have what our clients are designed to have, which is that kind of medium to long term strategy. Um, so there are the three ways you can open an account with us. I would I would say that 
uh, you know, I've said before, we're a very, very personable firm. If anyone wanted a kind of one-to-one -one chat with us, more than happy to do that, whether it's face-to-face, -face, whether it's a video call or a phone call, no problem at all. We can help you with some of the things that we may not have covered today. Um, but we want to do more with Peter Jarman so we can, you know, we can do more of these sessions and, and, and delve into maybe some of the other aspects of crypto that are of interest. But we're always there to talk to and we're very proud of the partnership with, with Peter John. So I just, uh, so feel free to use that code or go through, say KVAN, go through Peter Jarman um, and arrange a chat with us whenever you want. That's no problem at all. Uh, I would uh, say if there's any, I can see the chat. So if there's any questions at this point, which I've not looked at until right now, then feel free to, to pop it in. Uh, I'll give you a minute or so to do that. If not, as I say, I'm not the one who normally does uh, these kind of presentations. So apologies if it wasn't quite as uh, slick and svelte as it may have been, but uh, normal service will be resumed because frankly, my colleague Gareth loves these type of things and he relishes in the limelight. He's also very good at it. Um, so yeah, more than happy to uh, answer any questions now though, if there's any coming in. I can see someone's typing, so I'll hold on just a moment. Also, uh, also, okay, then what I'll do is I'll just um, unmute you as well if you had anything you'd like to add. I think you're unmuted now. No. Hi, Jay. Hello. Oh, hi. I've got George with me as well. Hi, uh, hi George. Yeah, that was great. Really, really interesting. And we'll send a recording out to everyone who has signed up and we'll post it on LinkedIn and Twitter and everything. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and as I think Scott just mentioned in the chat there, yeah, absolutely, Scott, please arrange it. We'll have a we'll have a kind of one to one chat. That, that's what we're all about. And um, and, you know, if it's all possible, uh, we like to do a lot of face to face business as well. That's where we're really unusual in this crypto space, because frankly, who does that? Right. Um, but we, we really like that. And we, we believe it to be the kind of the future where the industry should go. Um, but yeah, yeah George was saying that it took him 48 hours to get a reply mm -hmm. from, yeah. from crypto. Yeah, crypto. Often not the reply you want either, right? Um, <laughs> well, typically quite generic most of the time. Absolutely, yeah. You see, they're just not kind of based on that kind of clientele where they just want you to trade. It's just go in, buy and sell, and, and, yeah. and that's fine. But you can't, that's not being a derogatory towards them at all. That's their business model. We're just so, so different. Um, and as I say, it's, it's an interesting fact, I think, that with that kind of that AUM model at 0.95% of your holdings per year, it's in our interest for you to do well. Um, that's, that's the point. The, the larger your portfolio, the more money we make. So we are designed in every step to you know, stop any kind of what we feel might be bad decisions or not in line with a wealth mindset is to help people kind of grow a decent portfolio mm -hmm. uh, and build wealth. Brilliant. Thank you, Jay. My pleasure. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jay. Take care. Thanks, Peace everyone. Cheers.